Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha everybody, and thanks for joining us at Think Tech Hawaii. This is Security Matters, and I am your host, Andrew Lanning. Today we're going to be talking about retail security, and I really want to dig in a little bit with our guest about kind of what's going on behind that browser. I'm sure a lot of you are used to using the browser, but you may not really know what's happening while you are. Uh, our guest today is Chris Schwartz. He is a business intelligence analyst. Thanks for joining us. I know you've been at this for a long time, and um, I appreciate you taking some time off to come in here and talk with us about this. I, uh, I think I'm like a lot of consumers out there where I'm using online services and shopping on Amazon and shopping on, I, I need things. I'm, I hate to go to the store. I love the convenience of online. Even when I'm going to go to the store and pick it up, I'll, I'll buy stuff and then have it you know, waiting for me when I get there. Um, but a lot of us do, I really don't know how that works and, and, and what's happening. So today I wanted to talk about um, that, that experience first. So why don't you give us a little bit of, of your background, you know, kind of where you grew up, went to school, how you got to Hawaii, and then uh, we'll get, kind of get into the browser after that. All right. So uh, I grew up in South Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Oh. Uh, went to school at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Oh, nice. And uh, spent about, I'd say, 20 years in Atlanta. Uh, my degree was in electrical engineering. Uh, I don't actually use my degree at all. <laughs> okay. So uh, you, you, you're one that got, you got freed up from into the EE. Yeah, it's yeah. It's funny how but a lot what, of EEs do other things. But what the school did is I met my, my future wife uh, oh. at Tech. Awesome. So, uh, uh, but she ended up finding a job out here in Hawaii. Okay. And uh, we had always thought about moving somewhere else other than Atlanta. Atlanta is a nice city. Lots of opportunity there, but uh, I miss the warm weather. And so I, I know your wife. Did she grow up in Atlanta as well? Uh, no, she grew she up just, all over. Okay, and then she California, ended up in a little bit Georgia out of the Tech, okay. in Maryland. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that brought you to Hawaii. And how long have you been here? I've uh, been here about uh, almost seven years now. Awesome. So yeah. your work has been uh, in the, the database, sort of behind the scenes yes. of, of, a, re, of so, a retail organization. So I actually don't deal directly with security, so I'm afraid I can't give okay. a whole lot of detail about what companies are doing relative to security. I can talk in generalities, but sure. uh, not, not in the specifics. Um, I deal mostly just with the actual data generated, uh, ah. like everything that a company does. I right? see. So, so you know, um, when you say data that's generated, is that you're referring to sort of what the user has done while he's yeah. using that browser? Right. And that data, um, let's let's talk about what that is first of all, and what it yeah. means for the the development. So I, I have a I have an interesting statistic for you. I just recently read. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is according to uh, something I read online on IBM site uh, from 2017. That uh, I think, they, and I don't know how they came up with this number. It's got to be a pretty big estimate, but. Uh, 2.5 quintillion uh, bytes of, of data are generated daily uh, from online activity. Oh, quint a quintillion, yeah, which is it's uh, 30 zeros. Yeah. 30 zeros. Yeah, yeah, that's every day. And you, that's right? they just send you that and you figure yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah. Then there was some other statistic, uh, and this was back in I think 2012 when this one came up. Was like 90% uh, of of all the data that was stored had been generated in the previous two years. Oh my God! And that was five or six years ago, right? And so it's this exponential growth in, in data. Everything we do when you're on your phone clicking around, okay, that's that's recorded. If you make a phone call, there's there's records of data being recorded by your uh, mm. your provider, right? When you're online, every single click in most cases is recorded. Wow! That doesn't mean they have your personally identifiable information, your name, Andrew Landing, in this case, right? Okay. Attached to it, but they do know that uh, this device here visited, say, uh, Walmart or Amazon, for hmm. example. And is this, the, the MAC address of this device is tied to that transaction, or do you, uh, uh, and it's, the, they don't the operating the Mac, system, I'm sure? Yeah, they don't have the MAC address, but generally, uh, cookies are used. Everyone uh, uh, knows what cookies oh, are, right? Just basically the infamous these text, cookies. Just text files, right? Okay. And their, their purpose of them is to hold stateful information specific to the site that you're on, right? Okay. And so they could, a lot of times it could be, uh, things that you use to personalize the site, whether you're filtering on various things um, oh. authentic for authentication, right? So if you log in, uh, you'll get an a encrypted key uh, in that cookie that the site then knows when communicating with your machine, at least for that period of time. Usually there's an expiration time on it. On, the, uh, on that transaction right, that will or then, that session. Will then allow you to get to your profile information. Oh, I see. Instead of and continually asking for your password. Yeah, like who are you every time you want to do that's something. Right. So that's a session cookie right. we're talking right. about, right? Right. And these cookies could also be used 
uh, for personalization, for tracking, right? And so one of the big things they do is you're, you're, you're assigned a visitor ID, right? It's just you, a visitor to the site. It's, it's usually okay. just an, it's just a non-descriptive, a number, often numeric, mm -hmm. uh, that's unique to your machine. Okay. Right. And so repeat visits, you'll have that same ID. Oh, so it recognizes that's me right. when I come back. Yeah, I know. I notice how sometimes you know if you you're looking at a thing, maybe you don't even buy it, but then it'll it somehow shows up when you're doing something else. And so is that, are, is there people mining that, that sort of activity, I guess I want to call it, or that's, that's cookie information yeah, yeah. for so things that I did while I was shopping? There, there's, uh, there's, there's probably hundreds, if not thousands, of companies out there that provide very specific services that can be used by I these see. online retailers, right? Okay. Um, now, whereas Amazon, I think, does a lot of their own stuff in-house, a lot of uh, uh -huh. other companies, like, say, a Walmart or a Home Depot or a Hawaiian Airlines, They'll actually work with third parties okay. um, to provide spe very specific services, right? So one of those might be there's these ad exchanges. Right? Add like a double, so click double click or something. I've, right? I've seen that Pretty before. is another sure. big one, right? Um, ah. And so what they'll do is these companies uh, will actually, the way it works is they'll actually have like a, it's typically, it's called a, a, a web beacon. Okay. And you'll put this on your site. Uh, a lot of times it could be like a one by one uh, pixel that's invisible. And oh. so when that page is is accessed, right, that then calls off to the third party, Credio or DoubleClick, which is now owned by Google, uh, and transmits that maybe you were uh, on the swim outlet looking at goggles. Okay. Right? And so now DoubleClick knows that at least someone using this machine was looking at goggles on swim outlet. Okay. And so then maybe you go to another site and you'll see a little image down there of your goggles that yeah, yeah. following you Because I didn't, does it know if I bought them or not? I was kind of wondered about that, you know? So it might, might keep selling me goggles until I make a purchase? That's right, yeah. Interesting, and so, yeah. it, and so that, but that's not done necessarily by the, the retailer themselves. You said perhaps Amazon's big enough to do some of that in-house. A lot of stuff they do. And is this, this is, um, is this driven by like machine learning? Is it, is it approaching an AI yeah, I think, level? Or? I think most companies out there are now uh, starting to, to add artificial intelligence and machine learning to, to a lot of these hmm. uh, algorithms. Right? Yeah, because it's interesting, you know, when you talk about that much data, right, obviously there's no p group of people that can consume that much behavioral data, especially from a, a large retailer who maybe has, what, do you have any idea what, what, how many people shop online like daily or do you, you know like um, yeah I don't I don't know that stat yeah, okay, I, I guess I not do, like, I do one stat Amazon day. might know <laughs> I'm, I'm out of stats now but uh, okay <laughs> but I think you could probably Google that and I think you'll find that people there, there's statistics on that like in North America there's what yeah three four hundred million and it, and people it's, and it's astounding because it's growing every year right yeah. so we certainly haven't peaked out by any by any means right? sure and then the on the B on the business intelligence side of that. What you're really looking at is are all those users, and not just like what they bought, but all the things they did on the site while they were there. Now, is that uh, my understanding is that, that these um, the intelligence you're doing is, is really designed to help improve my experience um, uh, when yeah, I'm it, using it that be, product? It could be for a whole, whole host of things. It can be okay. for just, uh, for example, it could just be to monitor site operations, right? Oh. So I'm sure we've all seen errors occur online right when we're we're clicking around and that's quite annoying oh like the menu doesn't work right. or you try to go to an item right. okay i got you right or even worse you're you're in the checkout process and you get right up to the end and you go to submit <laughs> payment and then you get it, it spins for a while right and then you get uh, and then what do you, right? you say oh gosh did right. it did it take my credit card or not you don't right. know what to do okay so one of the purposes of logging all of this data is not just to to track and to provide personalization but it's also to improve the site experience right and to identify maybe there's a Maybe there's an issue with a very specific new release of, of a Chrome uh, version of the browser, right? Oh. And, and so this can help with that. Oh, and the handling of it. But you're, you're not necessarily a code guy yourself, or, or have you done code work, or do you typically? Uh, I, I would say less the, it, well, the language that I typically use is called SQL. Okay, uh, sure, SQL. And that's, and that's used to uh, basically query all of this, this data, right, mm -hmm. to make sense of it. Hmm, interesting. And, uh, what is the what is the upstream reporting? So, if I'm a, a business intelligence guy working for in, in the retail space, are they what, what's the what's the top thing they need to know? What's the can you give us an idea of what sort of in, information they're trying to gather from the type of work that you do? I think the biggest thing is uh, just taking a look at uh, 
not just how the site performed uh, yesterday or last month, but also how's it performing right now, right? Mm. So more, it used to be if you went back five, let's say five years ago, 10 okay. years ago, a lot of reporting is, and a lot of companies still are this way, but a lot, a lot of the reporting was what happened yesterday. Oh. Um, right, and, and, and now people are getting more into the what's hap what happened uh, five minutes ago. Wow. Right, so that you can act uh, much more quickly. Wow. Right. H how and, do they, and, go ahead. And, and so, but there's several key metrics that people look at on okay. sites. So one would be uh, how many visits did we have in some period of time? And quite often, for comparison purposes and to handle seasonality, you'll look at what, well, let me compare it to last year this time. Oh. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Um, and so you look at that on a percent basis. And most companies have targets for, uh, you know, expected growth in terms of uh, visitors per day or visits per day, um, orders per day, that sort of thing. And, and you can track mm. uh, really in real time how you're doing on that. Wow. Right. And so that's, that's, at the highest level, what you're looking at. Conversion rate's a, a big deal, right? Is that when you're so, purchasing? So right, when someone comes there, they actually make a transaction? Which is just simply orders divided by visits, right? Orders divided by visits, okay, yeah. sure. That makes yeah. sense. And, and so, so that's a key, a key metric. Do you, do you know how people got there? Like, do you track, because is, is there like, do, don't people sort of get paid to, to dra drive you to your yeah, site so, or stuff like that? So generally, every click that uh, that you make on a site, you can think of as being recorded. And Any site. In, in in this, you'll have uh, you might there might be hundreds of different fields of information that may or may not be populated. Okay. Some are always populated, like uh, your your visitor ID. You'll okay. have a sequence number for which visit is. This is this your first visit or is it your fiftieth visit? Um, there'll be a sequence for is this your first uh, page view within your this today's visit or is it your fifteenth? Oh. Uh, so you can do sequencing on that and look at how much time you spend on each page. But then it'll have IP address and geography. Um, but one of the other things it'll have is it'll have your referrer. So where did you come from? Did okay. you come from Google? Did you come from um, someone's blog? Uh, did you come from an affiliate site where they, you, you actually pay the affiliates to, to bring traffic to your site? I for see. Example, right? And then a lot of times there's tracking codes in there. Um, so that you can give credit to various affiliates, and then there's actually they'll get a um, they'll get money for that. Yeah. So there's people yeah. that are that they, I know like like if you can create a good yeah, you know YouTube channel, channel like Think Tech yeah. Hawaii, then yeah. if we could if we marketed stuff here, if we could right. if we we could get like collect revenue, right? right. If we and referred uh, got people to go to a site and buy stuff, that's really awesome. Right. right. Um, so we're coming up on the middle of the break. This is fascinating stuff. I know not many of you work behind your browser, so thanks for sharing this. We're going to come back with a little bit more of, um, I think, business intelligence. We're going to talk about this stuff behind the browser. And so join us back in a few minutes. We're going to pay some bills. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters. I am here today. We're talking about the experience behind the browser. I'm here with Chris Schwartz. He is a business intelligence consultant. Uh, he's been at this quite a while, so we're trying to get some insight into what's behind that online shopping experience. Um, so, Chris, we were we were just now kicking around the idea that um, you know a, a site like ThinkTech could. Um, I don't think we do this here, but if we were if we had advertising on here that drove people to 
a uh, to click into a, a, a Amazon site or another retail site that we could perhaps get revenue for that. Essentially, and is is that a uh, a popular way that the internet works to drive people to things? Do you have to pay to subscribe to people to do that, or you just pay them per transaction? Or do you know much about how that works? Yeah, I think you, I don't work in that space Understood. as closely, uh, but there's affiliate sites. Um, I think one of the big commission junctions, a big one. Oh, okay. Uh, where they will basically, uh, they have all these different sites that I think that they manage, and they'll they'll actually drive traffic to all of their customer sites, basically, huh. right? And so, does that translate as well from like I'm thinking like um, you know how you're on the plane, for example, reading a magazine, and there's like a link to something that you want to know about. And it, it does can that start that way as well? Like, could that magazine actually get some revenue for having? You know, do they know that that, that link sort of came out of that magazine yeah, think, or ad and things like that? Yeah, I think it depends, but often that would be the case, right? Especially if it's in print. Yeah, it's tracked uh, well so enough. You, usually there's what's called a tracking code is in there. Okay. Uh, so if you do click that link, uh, the tracking code gets recorded in your, your visit as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can tally up how many visits did we receive from... Uh, this particular source. May I add? Right. So, because that's how you know. How else would you know that your advertising, you know, bringing you value, yeah. right, or whatever? Yeah. And sometimes you, you uh, sometimes you're only paid if there's a purchase, and other times it might be you're paid just via clicks. But mm -hmm. I think uh, most prefer that a purchase occurs. Hmm. Right. I see. So, you know, because if they Revenue believe in their advertising, yeah. if they're doing a good job with yeah. their promotion of the of their material, then probably they're they get a higher return from you actually making a purchase. Do you know what much about, is it per purchase, or is it percentage, or is it all over the board, or? Yeah, like, I'm not as close to those, but typically you'll, you'll hear of like revenue sharing models where it might mm -hmm. be uh, on a percent basis, or maybe there, there's probably a cap on that as well, of hmm. course. Yeah, I'm wondering, like if you're an, an Adidas, right, or something, and then you sell your shoes at lots of places. So if I'm on Adidas's website, yeah. shopping for some shoes, I don't know if they sell direct or not, yeah. but then when I go to, I want to buy some shoes. How do they determine where do I go? Foot Locker or, you know, yeah. I wonder how that works. I mean, so there must be some sharing of that. Like, you wouldn't want to necessarily give me to your competitor to make a purchase if, if I sold similar things. It, what, but side, maybe if, what side are you on right now, though? I'm not, well, I'm yeah. on LinkedIn, but. Yeah, but, if, <laughs> but so let's just say, for example, if, um, let's say, for example, I was buying some uh, tools yeah. and so I was on Lowe's and then and then I wanted to, I wanted to check the, the, that item, and I maybe took the the item from Lowe's and said and and stuck it back in the browser and clicked it again, and it came up and it moved me to over to Home Depot, for example. Yeah. Would you think that, they share that, revenue as well for well, that, that for that, that hammer? That would potentially let's say you went to Google, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a number of different types of search, but at a high level, it's either uh, there's SEM, which is which is paid search. Okay. Right, or there's SEO, which is more it's called organic search, which is which is free. I see. Uh, the SEO, which is free, is the preferred model. Most most companies will spend a lot of time improving their SEO uh, and score that's, and is rankings. That search engine right? optimization. So that, that's right. Okay. Um, whereas, because uh, that's free. Sure. Right, and that they do that uh, through tagging on the site. So the the uh, all the search engines have web crawlers that read these tags periodically, um, and then there could also be rankings from other sources as well mm. that'll bump you up. And then the paid search would be, uh, so if you had clicked your Adidas shoe in Google via the paid ad, which is typically above the organic search link. Oh, you mean when the results come up, how it'll have you, it'll have You'll advertisement, see it twice advertisement. A lot of times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that because people are lazy? Yeah, I don't know, but usually, <laughs> I think most. I think Google knows, right? You generally click the first one you see. Uh, I right? see. Okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm guilty so of that myself. You can't, you can't blame them, right, for putting that one first. But so they pay yeah. to do that. Yeah. In most cases, yeah. to be first, even, and that's because it's typically not like the Adidas site. You know, it's like they you have to go down a few, yeah. or you end up on some other retailer. It's like really, I want to go look at yeah. like the features and benefits of the thing. Right. Interesting. Okay. So how much? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you have an estimate of like how much um, or organic people, you know, get, uh, what's the word I want to use? Not manipulated, but how much people arrive organically to a retailer versus paid? Or do you think it's, I, I think people it, are more you know, driven? No, I think it varies by, uh, by site, right? And so I think most retailers are going to have 
uh, segmentation of all of their sources. Okay. Right. So at a high level, there might be um, maybe they have eight to ten different um, called marketing channels. Um, the, the most basic would be direct, which would just mean you directly typed in where you wanted to go into the URL. Gotcha. Okay. So you don't like, really, you like, don't have you don't have a referrer. You didn't come from a search engine. Okay. Uh, you didn't do a click through from an email. So I went Adidas.com. Um, right. Okay. Right. Then there, then uh, then you have search, right? And sure. then search you could break into the paid versus free. SEO by, versus by just SEO. your choices, like so. By right. after I do my search, I get pre right. re presented some options. Right. And then, and so does I guess Google? That's their their version of what they sell, right? They sell that search right. optimization to retailers. Right. Right. For, but there's right. But you can you can come from Google, and it could be SEO or it could be SEM. Right. Either one. Yeah. Sure. And, right. and they might still get paid anyway. Right. Right. You might come from an email, right? Let's say you subscribe oh. to a, an email program for, for a company. Mm -hmm. You do a click through from there. That's uh, likely considered a channel for most companies. Okay. Right? Because you want to be able to measure uh, performance of your, your CRM, uh, you know, customer relationship management with email mm -hmm. uh, marketing, right? Yeah, coming like from your, yeah. your newsletter, for right. example, or something like right. that. Right. Uh, what else? You might have affiliates, right? So that might be another channel. Uh, Are, socials, another channel, right? Oh, so I you guess might so. look at Facebook, uh, right? <laughs> coming from or Pinterest, okay, or Twitter. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Are, um, how, is everything is everything that I do like is that valuable to someone <laughs> but, online? <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. But I think every company you know spends time on all those channels. But some companies might spend more time on SEM. Other companies might spend more time on. On email or uh, mm -hmm. on social, for example, right? So I think it really depends. Is there any seasonality to that? Like, you obviously they have the Black Fridays in the mall. Do they have a? Do they have an equivalent in the sh in the retail world for yeah, that I mean, behavior? So, certainly, for retail, Black the Black Friday holiday period is one of the biggest for most most companies. But is that right? is that in the store? Or is that also online? It's 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 both. Okay, it's both, but wow. it's it's a really big deal online. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. so is is there a is there a change in the behavior of websites at that time that they're trying to do, or because they know lot, people are more fervently yeah. purchasing? Just or? a lot more deals, a lot more. more deals. Oh, so throw deals at people, yeah. and they'll they'll yeah. they'll, they'll yeah, a lot more marketing spend. Uh, oh, and, uh, to the marketing yeah. side, yeah, and and that's re and so that's related to how many times maybe your your retail name gets presented right. to someone. Like, like might, if, if I might. search blue jeans, yeah. maybe Levi's pays the most, so I see 50 different blue jeans outlets, or is that That's, is that a reasonable, reasonable characterization? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Oh, wow, amazing. So is is the user very much in charge of what he's doing when he's browsing? Could I ask that question? Like, I, th I think he can, but maybe it takes... Uh, you need to pay attention. A little willpower. Yeah, you really need to pay attention. Yeah. So, so the but the um, so we talked a little bit about the cookies. I want to I want to make sure I'm clear. So they're they're just collecting information. There's they're not driving stuff. Not in a session. Like so, if I'm here and I'm looking at some shoes and moving around in a site, that information is all outbound. It's recorded, but it's outbound. They're not they're not um at that at that point like flipping a page to me like there's no there's no activity no, no, they no, can't no. drive no, the just, browser uh, it, think of it like cache it's just recording uh, a piece okay. of information to hold it on your machine uh, so it can be uh, referred to later by the by the server the site you're on right and yeah. so some of this business intelligence that you do takes a look at that behavior of those people and tries to decide is the site working as well as it should with this or could we do you do comparative like if we put the title bar on the left versus the title bar on the right do you learn from that absolutely or? okay yeah. yeah there's all kinds of a b testing that that occurs a b you, testing yeah is that site a site b you can think of it like that but oh. uh, is that back, like back, live back to your example right should we put the the bar on the left should we put it on the right should okay. we put it in the middle that oh. sort of thing right and so you can uh, you, you you can randomly break that up with visitors that come in that day and oh. have, you know, roughly a third. Let's say we did left, center, and right, and you could do roughly in thirds, and then see uh, in each of those groups uh, which one would, was used more frequently. Ah, right? and is it? What do you? What's the goal? Do you want to keep people there? Do you want to make them purchase? Like, if do you care if they come in? They're only there two seconds, but they buy. Or I mean, is the I guess the buying's the thing. The buying's the, the transaction. Yeah. So what's the what's the hallmark of a good website? I think you want to make it as 
friction-free as possible. Friction-free. Right? Yeah. You want to make it easy for them to find what they're looking for. And that's this, <clears throat> the personalization is part of that, okay. right? It's, it's to show you things that uh, the company or the site thinks you're going to be interested in, right? Okay, uh, which so comes from that so cookies that you, or right. those, those other affiliates that have tracked all that about me. Right, right. Okay. Or, or just data that, that the company has in-house on your previous uh, visits. Oh. Right? How many, previous behavior. Do you have any yeah. ideas how many people go to buy to the same place? Do they trust their, you know, trust mm -hmm. a piece of it? Like I know I always have a great experience with, with Best Buy, so I always go to Best Buy versus I don't even know where else to go. But. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think trust is a big part, and I think mm. uh, ease of use on the site. Um, like the, the checkout's a big deal, right? That's where. Oh the, yeah, the e yeah. You know, so a lot of a lot of websites are moving to the single page checkout. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you know. So Amazon had had a patent on the. That was it the one single click checkout or something. Okay. Like that. And I I think I saw something about that actually. Uh, ended in 2017, so now companies can more easily start oh. to do these things where you have just one page for checkout instead of having to click through five different pages, right? Because each I one see. of those clicks is an opportunity for you to to bounce, to leave, or, or oh. for an error to occur, or is that change, when, or maybe you change your mind? Yeah, is there is there? I was wondering if it's like yeah. buyer's remorse. Do yeah. people get to if it's a slow process, yeah. they have time to think? You know, do I really need this? Right. Is my wife really going to ask me what yeah. I bought this time? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think about. She has all of our Amazon Prime. I don't even yeah. get to buy anything. I just I have to send it to her. Can I have this? Yeah, same same as my wife. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, um, any uh, any last things you should, you want to uh, share with us about the the retail experience? What the you know? Any last advice for the audience? No, I I think most of this personalization is is there to try to help you, right? Yes, it's first and foremost to to improve sales on the site, but I I think generally a company is trying to show you things they think you'd be interested in, right? I don't think they're trying to to show you things that you don't really care about because that would be a, a waste of uh, screen real estate, mm. right? It, it, it's all about monetization and, and uh, making money. Making right? money. So the retail experience is good for you out there. It's, um, you know, they're collecting information about what you do, but it isn't personalized to you. We learned that today. We learned there's a whole lot of interest in how you act online. So. Um, I hope that was beneficial for you. Um, next week, uh, we may be dark. I have a um, change of command at the NSA that I'm supposed to attend, so I may not be here. But uh, please join us again on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you want some great community programming and join us here uh, because security matters. Thank you.